Module 5, Principles of Meat Cookery. The world of culinary arts is vast and varied, but meats hold a special place in it. Meats are so much more than just another ingredient. To truly appreciate and utilize them, one must delve into the intricacies of their nature, preparation, and cooking. Let's embark on this journey together. When discussing meats, you often hear the term primal cuts. These are the foundational large cuts from which everything else originates. These primal pieces undergo additional refinement by butchers to create sub-primal cuts, which are either cooked directly or further refined into what are known as fabricated cuts. Regardless of the cut, all meats share a basic composition, a significant amount of water, a good dose of protein, and a sprinkle of fat, along with a few other elements. This brings us to the subject of fat. Have you ever noticed the white patterns on a piece of meat? That's marbling. It's not just about the look. Marbling, or the intramuscular fat, plays a pivotal role in ensuring that the meat is flavorful and tender. But how do we ascertain the quality and safety of the meat we consume? This is where the United States Department of Agriculture, USDA, comes into play. They have the significant responsibility of ensuring that our meats are processed under strict sanitary conditions. Moreover, they provide us with a useful tool, the USDA grading system. This grading system helps everyone from producers to consumers measure and understand the quality of the meats. So, the next time you see a round stamp on a meat product, know that it signifies the quality assurance from the USDA and indicates its origin. Now, once you've got your hands on a good piece of meat, the next important step is aging. It's a method to enhance the flavor and tenderness. Contrary to popular belief, the aging process involves two key elements, heat and moisture. Wet aging relies on moisture and involves vacuum packaging the meat and refrigerating it. On the other hand, dry aging employs controlled heat, combined with specific humidity and airflow settings, to achieve the desired results. Regardless of the method, it's essential to store meat at the right temperatures, ideally between 30 Fahrenheit and 35 Fahrenheit. If you're looking to freeze your meats, speed is of the essence. Quick freezing helps avoid large ice crystals, which can be detrimental to the meat's texture. The perfect temperature for this process is a chilly 50 Fahrenheit. Once our meat is aged and ready, we move to preparation. Certain meats might need to be tied or trussed to retain their shape and prevent them from drying out during cooking. The act of cooking itself can vary from broiling to grilling or even roasting. Properly stored, aged, prepared, and cooked meat can elevate a meal from ordinary to extraordinary. Poultry? The world of culinary arts is vast and intricate. As we journey through the diverse meats, we arrive at the doorstep of the poultry family, an essential domain every chef must be proficient in. Picture this. You're in a bustling kitchen, and your main dish of the evening is a succulent roast duck. How prepared are you? Let's embark on understanding poultry. In its classic sense, when we speak of poultry, we're referring to a cluster of domesticated birds bred mainly for consumption. We're talking about the familiar chickens and turkeys, and then the more gourmet choices like ducks, geese, and pigeons. Oh, and let's not forget guineas. Delving deeper, did you know poultry muscle is a cocktail of roughly 72% water, 20% protein, 7% fat, and a hint of minerals at 1%. Quite fascinating, right? Unlike beef, poultry fat is devoid of marbling. This fat is softer and thus melts away at lower temperatures, giving it that unique texture and taste. When you sink your teeth into poultry, especially if it feels tougher than beef, it's because, well, it is. Poultry muscle is indeed tougher. Now, have you ever wondered about the distinction between the white and dark meat in your Thanksgiving turkey? The whiteness of the breast meat or the wings and the contrasting darkness of the legs or thighs arise from the protein myoglobin. This protein's primary role is to store oxygen for muscle tissue. High concentrations of myoglobin result in the darkening of the tissue, hence the color variation. As a chef, it's paramount to distinguish between different bird categories. The USDA neatly classifies them into six. Chickens, ducks, geese, guinea fowls, often shortened to gee, pigeons, and turkeys. 
Recognizing these categories aids a chef in gauging the cooking duration and selecting the optimal cooking technique. But wait, there's more to the bird than just its meat. The giblets comprising the livers, gizzards, hearts, and necks are culinary treasures in their own right. While gizzards represent the bird's second stomach, the hearts and necks are golden tickets to elevating the flavor of gravies. And if you're ever in the mood for a rich stock, do remember to toss in the neck. Ensuring the poultry you work with is of top-notch quality is crucial. But here's a fun fact. While the USDA conducts rigorous inspections on poultry, these only ascertain sanitary processing conditions and not the product's quality or tenderness. Now you know. Choosing pristine poultry is just the start. Preserving its quality demands precise storage conditions. When procured fresh, poultry feels most at home between 32 Fahrenheit's, 34 Fahrenheit's. If frozen, then a chilly zero Fahrenheit's, 18 Fahrenheit's below zero is ideal. And a word to the wise, poultry can be a playground for the salmonella bacteria, leading to grave food illnesses. So, impeccable sanitation and storage practices non-negotiable. Let's talk cooking. With poultry, the culinary world is your oyster. For those who prefer the dry heat approach, broiling, grilling, roasting, sodding, pan frying, and even deep frying are on the table. However, if the dish calls for something moist, tender, and bursting with flavor, the moist heat methods of poaching and simmering beckon. Beef, veal, and lamb. In the sprawling world of culinary arts, chefs come across a myriad of ingredients. Among these, meats such as beef, veal, and lamb hold a special place. Let's embark on a journey to understand these meats, their origin, and the significance they hold in the culinary landscape. Let's start with beef, a staple in many cuisines. Most of the beef consumed in the U.S. hails from steers, which are male cattle raised primarily for beef. When one thinks of beef, the juicy steak or a comforting stew might come to mind. But do you know from which part of the cattle these dishes come? Beef is divided into several primal cuts. These include the chuck, brisket and shank, rib, short plate, short loin, sirloin, flank, and round. For example, if you've ever savored the deep flavors of a chuck roast, you'd appreciate its rich flavor profile, which is distinctively more flavorful than, say, a tenderloin. For a chef, it's not just about cooking. Being adept at basic butchering tasks and fabricating cuts is integral. After all, the dish's final flavor is influenced by how the meat is handled, cut, and prepared. Moving on, let's talk about veal. Veal is derived from young male calves, usually less than nine months old. Its appeal lies in its lighter and more delicate flavor compared to beef, making it a favorite in many gourmet dishes. Due to the age of the calves, veal tends to be tenderer and has a lower fat content than beef. This inherent tenderness makes it a popular choice for many who prefer a milder meat flavor. And then we have lamb, a meat renowned for its unique taste and texture. When we refer to meat from sheep less than a year old, it's lamb. But if it's older, then it's termed mutton. Now, breaking down a lamb, you'd find various cuts, each with its culinary attributes. The shoulder, for instance, makes up about 36% of the animal's weight. Then we have the breast, which is 17%, followed by the rack at 8%, the loin at 13%, and lastly, the leg, which is a substantial 34%. When it comes to the leg of lamb, chefs often prefer not to leave it whole. It's versatile and can be broken down further for various dishes. Understanding meats, their cuts, and their best culinary uses is a hallmark of a great chef. The journey from farm to table is filled with decisions, how to cut, how to prepare, and how to present. Whether it's the rich flavors of beef, the delicate taste of veal, or the distinct taste of lamb, a chef's knowledge can transform these meats into culinary masterpieces.